Hey, this is Pastor Jerry at Crestview Wesley in Ashboro, North Carolina. Hey, Happy New Year. It's good to see you this year. Thank you for joining us, whether you're watching for the first time or if you watch it each and every week. Thank you for joining us. Hey, uh, to start out this year, I'm, I'm in a new place, a new location. We're in the Fellowship Hall at Crestview. Hey, we've got a little ambiance going on here with the, with the logs. And, but I wanted to do this because I'm going to do a, a little visual demonstration here in a little while that, that I think you're really going to enjoy. That's really going to help the message here. So let me start out by asking a question. Do, do you, at the beginning of each year, do you set resolutions? Do you say, you know what, I'm going to change this year? A lot of it is a weight loss thing or, or to diet or to exercise. Uh, that, that seems to be the, the trend that goes on every year because you see all the weight loss commercials and, and the fitness equipment. So that, that's a big thing. But, but do, you, do you think about maybe changing some things or, or doing better at some things now that the new year has started? The new year is, is starting off fresh again. So this is a great time to do it. Well, well, obviously, it's, it's a big thing on my mind. This is uh, 2022. It's my first message of the year. We had a, a guest speaker at Crestview last Sunday. So this is my first message of the year. And, and I was thinking about this, been thinking about it for a few weeks now. How, how should I start out the new year? What, what message should I do? And, and what I want to do is, uh, is a message and, and actually a visual you'll see a little bit later on in the message that, that was like one of the most life-changing things for me. It happened probably 20, 25 years ago. And, and it came from a class that I took and, and from a book that I read. It, it's, the, the name of the guy is, is Stephen Covey and it's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That, there were some things in that book that just really has changed me even today. And, and if you haven't got that book, it's a, it's a great book, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. But, but I'm going to incorporate some of the things in, in the message today. And, and I think it's going to be very helpful to, for all of us here because all of us could, could use some revision and some changing and some tweaking in our lives. So, just start out by saying this, all of us live with the same amount of time. You, you know, all of us have 24 hours in a day. Uh, we have seven days in a week. We have 365 or sometimes 366 days in a year. We, we all live under the same time. All of us is the same in, in that respect. We live, a, but how do you use that time that, that God has uh, allowed us and allotted us each day and each week and each month and each year. How Do you use your time wisely? You know, for, for most people, including me, I mean, this message here is for me also, is that we're not very good at using our time wisely. And, and, and there's uh, very few that do that. And, and to, do, to prioritize our time I mean, it takes, it takes skill. It takes discipline to do that. It just, it just doesn't happen. We've got to really focus on it and, and make sure that the, the main things and the priority things in our lives are, are the things that we need to be focused on. But a lot of times we don't do that. And that's what I'm going to talk about here today. And, and you may say, hey, I, I stay busy. I, I, I'm busy a lot, but but here's here's a question. You know what? You might be busy. You might stay busy, but are are you really getting anywhere? Well, uh, there's this guy. He's a great writer. He's a, he's a Wesleyan. His name is John Maxwell. He's written a lot of leadership books, and and he's he says this to to say what I was saying is he says that activity is not necessarily accomplishment. And we can look in Scripture, and Apostle Paul says this at least a couple of times. He's, he tells people to beware of being busybodies. And busybodies is simply uh, is someone who spends excessive time and effort where it doesn't belong. And we can find examples of that in Scripture. I can think of one just right off the, the top of my head where, where we become busybodies, and, and because of that, we don't really get to do the thing that's most important for us. 
Well, in, in Acts chapter 6, we read about the new church and, and these disciples and, and the church is growing like crazy and people are getting saved and that's a great thing, but it ends up causing some issues. Uh, there's, there's other ministries that are coming from this. There's people that need help. There's things that needs to happen. And the disciples are being spread very thin. And in Acts chapter 6, you have some widows that are complaining because you know what, they're not getting fed like they're supposed to be fed, they, they, uh, they think. And, and the disciples know that, that something's got to change. They can't be doing everything. They can't be stretched so thin that they can't do anything. And it says in Acts chapter 6, it's the, the 12 disciples says, Our job is to preach and pray. And from them doing other things, they're, they're not able to really focus on preaching and praying. So with God's incredible wisdom that they used, they, did, uh, they ended up selecting seven men filled with the Holy Spirit, men that were godly men, to take over these, this important ministry of helping out widows. And, and see, so what was happening is the disciples, these 12 disciples, offloaded the things that were, were, took them away from the ministry that God had called them to do. But when they got other people to do it, we can see the result of that at the end of chapter 6. At the end of chapter 6, it said that many more disciples were, were becoming Christians, were, becoming, were, were growing. There's more and more disciples that were happening. And then it said also that the church was growing like crazy and, and the gospel was being spread so you can see when you, when you focus on the priorities that it helps out everything. And, and just a little aside here, I'm, I'm a small, I'm here at a small church and we're more, mostly a traditional church and I see this and in our church, it can be a problem. In our church, it can be a problem in a lot of smaller churches and in any size church where it gets to the point of where the pastor is supposed to do everything that the, the people say, well, you know what, Th that's his job. He's, he's supposed to go to hospital visits. He's supposed to make all the calls. He's supposed to take care of the, the maintenance here at the church. He's supposed to do everything. And, and do you see what can happen with the pastor of the church? It can be the exact same thing as what happened in Acts chapter 6, that you just get spread so thin that, that true ministry isn't done. Do, do you understand? So... For us, for pastors in small churches, or pastors anywhere, the, their main focus is to, to preach and pray. And when we start being asked to do more and more and more, we're spread so thin that, I mean, it's, it's just a big stress bucket. And we get to the point of where we can't accomplish anything. We, we get burnt out. So we, we see that. And so, so let's move on here. This prioritization of time is something that Paul also talks about in, in Scripture. And I'm going to be in, in the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians today. And, and what, I just want to set this up because in, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, he, he, says, he says this to kind of set the table for the rest of the verses that he talks about. He says that, that we should live a life worthy of, of the calling we have received. Live a life worthy of the calling we have received. So the rest of the, the information after, the, after he says that is to explain to us how we could live this, this calling, live a life of this calling we have received. So that's the important thing throughout the rest of the message. So he gets on and he explains a lot of things and then he gets to Ephesians chapter 5 and he focuses on prioritization of time. So I'm going to read these verses here. It starts at verse 13 from Ephesians chapter 5, or actually starts in verse 15, and I'm going to read uh, these three verses here. So follow along with me. It says, be very careful then how you live, <clears throat> not as wise, unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So the first thing he says here in verse 15 is to be very careful of how we live. 
So what he is saying here, what this basically means, is pay very close attention to how you live. So this is, that is a very broad statement that can go from the way we live morally, the way we uh, spend our time, and, and definitely how we prioritize time. And see, he continues this in the second verse that I read here, verse 16. It says, the first verse, be, be very careful of how you live, be making the most of every opportunity in verse 16. So making the most of every opportunity is, is, is just simply using your time wisely. How do you use your time? Let me give you a story that really, I, I think, helps with this using our time wisely. I've told this story. Those of you who watch my messages know that, that back in the day, I used to play baseball. I love playing baseball. I love watching baseball. And, and back in my middle school and high school days, I, I played on, on various teams, and we had various levels of success. And one of the things from thinking through this and thinking through baseball and a lot of other things in life is that there was one year out of all those years that we played, that we were really, really good. And, and after thinking through this, I found out, I really figured this is, this is why we were so good for that one year, because it was basically the same teams I played on over all these years, but it was one year we were extra, extra good. And, and I thought about that. Why, how was that one year different, my sophomore year in high school, different than all the other years I played? Well, it, well, it's simply this, is when we practiced my sophomore year, we had a, a new coach that came in, and he understood the value of practice, and he also understood the value of using your time wisely during practice. And one of the things that he did is that the whole practice, we were busy doing something. We were using our time wisely. So, for example... If you, weren't, if you weren't hitting on the field where a pitcher or a coach was pitching to you, you were in the batting cage where a machine was just pumping balls to you. If you weren't in, the, in there where the machine was pumping balls, you were hitting balls up against the fence. Somebody was pitching to you. And if you weren't hitting in any respect, hey, you were out in the field. You were practicing taking ground balls. Or if you were in the outfield catching fly balls. Or you work on different uh, circumstances during the game where you would uh, work on like uh, how to hit the cutoff man. Know when a ball was out in the field, uh, which, what you were supposed to do when it was hit your way. And, and how to position your body. The whole time... The whole time that we had practice, every practice, it was just full. And, and we used our time wisely. There was no sitting around. There was no waiting for the next person to bat. There was no loafing off. We were constantly busy learning something, growing in something, staying, using our time wisely. And because of that, our baseball team was really, really good. And, and again, our, it wasn't because of superb talent or... Um, in a lot of other factors, the main thing that I can see through this is that our practice, we used them very effectively and we used our time wisely. See, that, that goes through everything, right? It goes for us as Christians using our time wisely. It, it, for businesses, for, for anything that we do, there is something about using your time wisely. And that's why Paul talks about this here today is, is using our time wisely. So... We, we can, it's, it's so important that we do that. So let, let's move on to, to my demonstration here, or it's actually Stephen Covey's demonstration that he did, and it comes from, from his book. But, but this here just blew me away, because we think about prioritiz, prioritizing time and using our time wisely. The way he did it is he, he used like uh, bowls like this, clear bowls, and, and the, these bowls are like, our time, time that, that we have in our lives and how, how we spend it. So this is like our life of time right here. Each one of these bowls is. And, and he used two different things to, un, to make us understand how we use our time and how to prioritize our time. So he uses one thing. One thing he has is these little, they're like little pieces of sand or little gravels. What, what this signifies is it's like um, 
things that are not really, really important that we use a lot, that we spend a lot of time with. So, for example, let's, let's think about this, and I'm thinking about my own life here, things that are not real, real important, like social media. There's a lot of time that a lot of us spend on social media each day. Uh, uh, people spend hours to it. Probably I do too. Spend way too much time on social media. Uh, staying on the internet, uh, looking at things on the internet like YouTube or things like that. Uh, we, we can think of um, m- maybe those of you who don't have uh, this social media stuff, maybe you're on the phone a whole lot or maybe you're watching a whole lot of, of TV or, or maybe maybe it's just like uh, Paul was talking about, you're just a busybody that you're just doing a whole lot of stuff but not really accomplishing anything. And see, that's what these little rocks right here signify. So what we, what we tend to do as humans is we fill our lives with the little stuff, the unimportant stuff first. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do is just put this in the bowl here and just show you. That's, what, that's generally what we do is we fill our lives with uh, the most unimportant things first. And see, when we do that, we, we've got important things in our lives. So that's what these, these rocks here signify. So the rocks can signify, I'm thinking about my own life here, they can signify things like, um, like uh, the one-year chronological Bible, the time that I spend doing that. That's important to me. That's important in my life. So I put that in there. And see, I can squeeze that in my life. I can still do that. And then I can think about, well, I'm a pastor, so I've got I've got church responsibilities. So I squeeze that in there. And then I think about, well, what about my my family? So I I squeeze that in there. And see what you can what you can see, you can probably see it here on the camera, is that you can you can fit it in there, but it gets harder and harder. And then you've got other things like you know what, my, my dad right now is, is having some uh, health issues and I want to be with him. It's a priority thing. But, but I've got all these other things going on in my life and I, I can't squeeze these in here and it gets to the point of where I can't get it in here. And then there's more things if you, if you have a, a job and if you work and you've got projects to do, you've got you to gotta get your project done. And, and you can see that it's getting to the point where it's, it's running over. You, you, you don't have the time to do these things, right? And, and there's still other, other priorities, high priorities, things that are most important, that because we filled our lives with the unimportant things first, we can't fit the important things in our lives. They, they just don't fit in. But, but watch this here. When, we've, when we change our perspective, and it takes discipline, it takes work, it takes, it takes effort to do, when we fill our lives first with the important things, like like church and things. Re- remember, all of this has to do with the backdrop drop of living our lives worthy of a calling we've received. So I'm talking here to Christians. If we put the most important things in here, like church and Bible study and prayer and our family and, and the things that are important for ministry, we put all of that stuff in there. And when we put the most important things in first... The most important things in first, and see, we still got plenty of room. We can get the unimportant things and just fill in the blanks. And when we do that, when we get the unimportant things that we put in after we put in the important things, do do you see here how it just goes right in there? And it fills it fills up the it fills up our lives, but but we're not overflowing. We don't we don't run out of things. Our life is complete. You see, it, it goes right over the top here. Let me move this out of the way. See, do you see what is what happens here? I think this is so. When I when I saw this years ago, it just it just changed me because I, I see in my life that I put so much unimportant stuff in, and I fill my life with all of this unimportant stuff first. And when I fill my life with all the unimportant stuff first, I have no room to put in the important things in my life, especially if I want to live a life of the calling that I've received. Do you understand? Don't, that, don't this visual make, really make you think about how to prioritize your time? Because we only have a limited amount of time, and it depends on how we use it. 
And most of us, including me, too many times, it put the little things in first. And we put the little things in first. The big things, the most important things, the high priority things, all of them are just not going to fit. And we're just going to have to get rid of the most important things, which is sad, isn't it? It, it is so sad. See, do, do, you see, do you see this? I think this is so, so important. See, uh, there was this guy I was reading through. Actually, it was, uh, it was John Maxwell's book. And, and there was a guy, Tim Redmond says this. He says, there are many things that will catch my eye, but there are only a few things that will catch my heart. See, the, the most important things, these big rocks is what catches our heart, and they should be in there first. They should be part of our priority. And, I, and I'm telling you, I'm, get, I'm getting a little better with this. I mean, I make sure I'm, I'm like doing my video here at, at night to get this done so I'll have time to visit my dad this weekend. And there's other priorities, too, with my family. There's, there's things that has to be done this week that I'm doing this tonight so I can make sure that I have time to spend with my family for important things with my family. So I'm putting in the big things first so I can take care of, of all the other things that are not quite as, as important. So let me say this to, to kind of wrap this up. I just, I just really, I hope you get something. If you don't get anything, I hope you get this here. But, but I, I want you to understand this too. When, when I'm talking about prioritizing time, I want you to understand that it's not all about task. It's not all about work. It's not all, it, it's not all about just staying busy, staying busy, staying busy in the kingdom of God, which we do, but there is also time that we need to have time to have fun and to relax and to love life. That's an important part of our time here. And it talks about this in Ecclesiastes. The writer of Ecclesiastes talks about this, I think it's four different times in these chapters here. And he, he basically says this. I'm reading this from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. But he, he says this, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to, good, and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toll. This is the gift of God. See, we, we need to make time to, to have fun, to, to be happy. To enjoy life. So just think it out off the top of my head. I love drinking coffee with the guys in the morning here at church. That's, I love it. It makes me happy. I, I love, like we did last week when my family goes off on vacation, I, I love that time. It's so precious to me. It makes me happy. I love when I cook burgers for, the, for my family and they come over. I, I love it. It's, it's so special. It's so important to me. Do things, guys that make you that make you happy but understand what ecclesiastes the writer of ecclesiastes is talking about is when he talks about having fun and having joy and, and drinking and being merry it's all with the focus on god your focus is on god again we the whole thing about us is living a life worthy of a calling we've received so our focus Throughout our fun times, our happy times, our, our times that are where we need to have our priorities right, it, when in time we need to make sure that God is always in the picture. And that's what the writer of Ecclesiastes says. Yeah, have fun. Go out and do things. Even when you work, you know what? Enjoy your work. But here's the thing. Make sure God's in the picture. Read, read through Ecclesiastes. Make sure God's in the picture. See, there's, a, there's an example of this, and this comes from a parable from Jesus, and this is from Luke chapter 12. It's about the rich fool. Uh, this is a story of the guy who, who had an incredible bumper crop. It was the best crop probably he's ever had in his whole life, and it was such a good crop that he knew that he could take off the next few years. So what he did is he built barns. And he threw all of his extra crops in there so he could take off a few years. And he said this, you know what, I'm just going to eat and drink and be merry. Which it sounds very similar to what we hear in Ecclesiastes. But there's one significant difference, right? 
in this parable that Jesus has in Luke chapter 12 is this rich fool. He didn't have God in the picture. God was not part of the picture, part of his wisdom, part of his priority. And because of that, his life was taken from him. Ecclesiastes talks about, hey, eat, drink, and be merry, but make sure God's in the picture. And as Paul says, to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. So all of that, all of the things we do with our priorities has to have God in the picture, right? So just this this last thing I want to talk about, and and I'm going to be done here. See, prioritizing time always should include prioritizing God. Isn't that true? So let me ask you, how do you use your time? Do, do you spend a lot of time on social media? Do you spend a lot of time watching TV? Do you spend a lot of time on the phone? Do you spend a lot of time being a busybody, just doing, doing things just to stay busy but not really accomplishing anything? I hope this, I hope this here got you to thinking and, and maybe to reevaluate your life and reprioritize and make sure the most important things go in first, right? And, and another thing that, that's important about this is that each year, I think we have to reevaluate what our priorities are. So there's a lot of them that stay the same, but again, thinking about my dad and some of his health issues, I've had to reprioritize some of the things in my life to, to put aside some things that maybe were more important before, but now to, to help take care of my dad and to be with him and to see him, you know, I've had to change some things. So it's the same with all of us, right? Man, I hope you learned something today. I hope, I hope you get this. I, I hope I taught this right so you can understand. If you don't, just, just let me know. Hey, if you got any questions or something, uh, Our information is on the screen here. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful 2022. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for our time together. Lord, I I pray that that we are smart about how we use our time. Lord, help us to, if we're spending way too much time on things, it's just busybody things, that Lord, that you just help us to, to put more focus on the things that are most important. And Lord, make, help us to put the high priority things in our lives first. And, and so that the other things that maybe are kind of fun to do, but not real important, will also fit in too. Lord, help us to just follow you, to, to live a life worthy of the calling that, that we received. Help us to do that, Lord. Bless each and every one today. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.